Hey everyone, welcome to your 15th uh, Java game development tutorial um, in our two-dimensional Java game development tutorial series. Uh, today I'm going to implement a frames per second uh, cap on our game. Um, some people like to have, as it is our game right now, consumes one CPU core completely, uh, or near, very nearly completely, whenever you run the game it'll just run as fast as it possibly can, render as many cycles as it can every second, which for my computer right now is about 200 something. Uh, the problem with this is that your computer can only refresh the monitor so many times per second. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to get, and, and, and some at a certain point, having more frames per second doesn't really increase the smoothness. Your eye can only perceive you know, a certain smoothness of movement. It's not going to care whether you're getting, you know, 500 or 600 frames per second. Um, you know, it just doesn't... I, I'm going to add that in because... Uh, partly because I'm on a laptop that has half the RAM that it's supposed to have. I'd like uh, to not, you know, run this game at full power if possible. Um, it, it will take some amount of power, of course. Games, games do that. But we don't want it to be consuming one CPU core entirely to render frames that you're never going to see in the first place. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, um, first, uh, so that I can look at my activity monitor program, because I'm on a Macintosh, you see I've got this activity monitor, um, I'm going to uh, comment out this um, make full screen line, so that we can still look at the activity monitor window. As you can see, whenever we run the game right now, we're running about 76% CPU. Um, that fluctuates from around 76 to up to 80-something. Uh, uh, so let's go ahead and quit the program, and I'm going to leave that commented out. What we're going to do is here in our game loop, while we said while true, and then we get started with our FPS counter and our graphics and all that, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to create a long, and call it start time, and it's equal to system.nanotime. Now that's system.nanotime is the most accurate system clock that we can get with Java. It's going to get the current system time in nanoseconds. After we finished our loop, what we want to do is we want to make the thread sleep for however long it needs to. Um, and the, how long should that be? Well, what we need to do is see how long it took us to complete the loop. If we want to have a frames per second of 60, let's say 60 frames per second, then we want to we want one cycle to take one sixtieth of a second. So if the cycle doesn't take a full sixtieth of a second, we have that remaining time for the thread to sleep and do nothing. Um, so what we want to do here is we want to say long total time equals uh, system dot nano time minus start time. What that does now is it subtract is it takes our current time minus the time we started that equals the number of nanoseconds that have passed between the two. Um, and what we want to do is we want to say if uh, total time is less than FPS time, or let's say, let's call it target time. Target time is how long we want it to take. As you can see, this has not been defined. So let's go up to the top here uh, and let's say private static uh, int uh, target time equals one zero 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 that's one seconds worth of nanoseconds divided by target FPS let's create target FPS private static int target FPS equals 60. Right now we're, we're going to have our target frames per second be 60. So the time that we should take is 1 second divided by 60. So 1 60th of a second. And this is 1 60th of a second measured in nanoseconds. So we've got, uh, you know, 1, uh, what is this, billion I think it is? 1 billion uh, nanoseconds divided by 60 gives us the number of na uh, nanoseconds in 1 60th of a second. And what we want to do is we want to see if our total time that we took to do this loop is less than 1 60th of a second. And we're measuring both in nanoseconds. If it is, we have some time left over and can sleep. So what we want to do is we want to say thread dot sleep. 
but sleep takes milliseconds, not nanoseconds, so it's no problem. Um, we'll just, in parentheses, we'll put, um, we want to sleep for however much time is left, so that's target time minus total time. So our target time minus the amount of time we took so far leaves how much time we have left. Uh, and all of that divided by 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so we divide that by 1 million and it gets us the number of milliseconds that remain for us to sleep. Now, we want to surround this with try and catch to catch the interrupted exception. Um, and now if we run this, um, let's take a look at our activity monitor. Come on, where is it? Our game is at currently 23.1% CPU. See what difference, what a difference that made? As you can see, we, we've greatly improved our uh, performance there. Um, let's take a look now. I'm going to go ahead and put it back into full screen, and we're going to see what our frames per second counter says. Where is the... Okay, here we go. We're going to make it full screen now. Run the game. And our frames per second counter is saying about 61. It almost always says 61 when I do this. I think it's... Oh, okay, we've got 60 now. Uh, but it'll stay around 60 or 61. And as you can see, our game still runs just fine. And I can press... Uh, I can move around. I can jump and everything. And it still looks, you know, really smooth. If you want to change how many fr target frames per second you're getting, you just change this target FPS variable here. But... Uh, note that whenever we're uh, moving, remember because I said about frame rate independence, we use the delta time value. Um, this won't affect the speed that your game runs at. In fact, I could set this for 4 and our game would look horrible because of its incredibly low frame rate. But notice we still move at the right speed. However, it does have an effect on our collision detection, uh, as you can see. Um, our collision detection is sort of based on how many times we do updates, uh, which is not too great of an idea, but I'm not going to go for something more complicated in this tutorial because this tutorial is using pixel games. Pixel games aren't aren't that complicated for this. It should This should work just fine. Um, but if you set this for 30, for example, uh, we got 30 frames per second now. According to our little counter down here, we're, we're hovering around 30 frames per second. Um, so I'm going to leave mine at about 60 because that's, that's just fine for, for our purposes. I uh, shouldn't need more than that. Uh, but you can set ever whatever you'd like. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and subscribing if you've subscribed. Um, and I'll see you next time.